gets in position for that bracket and we'll just kind of trace it. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Dark Arrow shop update. I'm standing behind the wing for the aircraft. Last time I think you saw it was upside down on the fuselage. We have it back in the mold and there's a lot of action going on back here that I want to update you guys on. So come around with the camera and we'll take a look. We're behind the wing now and we're looking at where I've been focusing most of my attention, which is on the fuel system for the aircraft. So not much to look at right now. That's because we have our seat bottom panel put in place, but it's serviceable so it lifts up like this. And that will reveal uh, a lot of the plumbing and the sump. So just high level, what we're looking at here, we've got our sump right in the middle that we've shown in previous videos. Our left tank feeds in from this line right here and then our right tank feeds in from this line right here. Up on top, we have our fuel vent lines that I've constructed and installed and those feed both to the left wing and the right wing and then back into the tanks. Uh, right here on this side, we have our supply line and that comes over up above the wing and then out to uh, the engine. And then we also have our return line that runs parallel to it. Right down here, we have another line that comes out of the lowest point of the sump and runs to this manifold that we machined out that matches the profile skin of the wing and it's bonded down right there. That'll house our little fuel check valve. And this mounts in to the bottom of the manifold on the underside of the wing and allows you to check for fuel contamination or to drain a portion of the tank if needed. Also plumbed into this little manifold is our fuel pressure gauge and basically depending on the height of the column of fuel in the wings that'll read out a different pressure on there and give you an idea or approximation of your fuel. So we're trying a couple different things for the fuel system to monitor fuel levels for the prototype. In addition to that fuel pressure gauge, we also have sight gauges. So that's this plumbing right here. I don't have it installed right now, but that we have one for the left tank, one for the right tank that plumbs in right here before it comes to the sump. And then this goes to your sight gauge on your seat back. There's another manifold while well, we're talking about the sight gauge. That's this little guy. So our tubing will plumb in to this. This goes through the seat back bulkhead and then our venting line comes out of that. So a couple little manifolds that I machined and then tubes that have been bent now and installed. Next steps on it are to do the click bonds for it to secure the lines and keep them from vibrating or moving or, or chafing. So that's what I've been focusing on at the moment. So I've got those kind of laid out in position where I'm gonna put them. Uh, in addition to that, I also created some manifolds and installed some hardware for our uh, fuel pumps. So these two little brackets or these two little components here are basically little manifolds and then we have our banjo bolts installed. So on the aircraft, it'll sit like this. We have our fuel shutoff valve and then this valve or not, not valve, but uh, fitting runs to the engine and that'll sit at our supply line area up there. So that's the fuel system work that we've been doing. Really excited of how it's turned out and how it's going. We only have a couple of tasks left on that to wrap this up, including the click bond install. And then in addition to that, I've been doing some work on the tips of the wings. So let's go take a look at that. In addition to the fuel system work, we've also been doing some work on the wing tip areas. And there's two pieces of equipment that we need to install on the left side, which is where we're at on the wing is the GMU or magnetometer or the Garmin magnetometer unit. So this is a little sensing element that connects with the G3X and it helps you to determine your directional heading. It's kind of a finicky little unit. It requires very precision uh, positioning in the aircraft for both the yaw roll and pitch directions. So what we did is we constructed a little bracket that you can see in here. This is made out of leftover titanium from creating the heat shield and it's adjustable for the roll direction. I think I lined it up pretty good for the other directions. So if to make any little adjustments, we'll be able to do that with this bracket. I had a design that I kind of liked, but I got voted out two to one by River and Riley on, on this one. So hopefully it works out pretty well. 
In addition to the work with the magnetometer, uh, I've also been doing some work on our wingtip caps. Those are gonna get bonded on like this. It didn't start out with this access panel. We cut that out on the router and then machined out this lip and bonded it onto there. We didn't have a design for that originally because we didn't know exactly how things were gonna be positioned in here. But now that we have that determined, we are able to put an access panel that made sense on here. So here's the little panel itself. The next steps for this is to put a leading edge screw and then an aft edge screw in there to keep it in position. And then, like I mentioned earlier, we'll have to bond this on. So that's some of the next steps, at least for the left wing tip. On the right, we'll be installing our pitot tube. So I've been doing some work on that side as well. I have our cap completed with our access panel on there. And then I'm designing up a little mount for our pitot tube to uh, be received into. So once we get the magnetometer installed, we get that pitot tube installed, our caps, bonded on, we'll be ready to paint the wing and the wing will be all wrapped up. So really excited about that. Hey everyone, we're at a bit of a mini milestone here on our way to getting the engine started and doing taxi testing. As you can see, I've got the panel installed and it's all hooked up to the engine. So in that setup, uh, I just wanna show you a few cool demos of what this looks like. So first thing I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna turn the panel on. The panel is getting its power from the firewall forward battery. And after about 10 seconds, you're gonna hear, if you listen really closely, the fuel pump relays turn off. So that signal is coming from the ECUs and those automatically prime the fuel pumps, turn them on so that you have fuel running up to your engine. You, you don't have to do that yourself. So that's something that happens automatically on each startup. With the panel turned on, I can also demonstrate some of the sensor data that we're getting back from the engine, which includes our cylinder head temperatures and our exhaust gas temperatures. Those are useful, especially in these first flights to know if we have cooling set up properly around the engine. And we can also differentiate between which pistons are having problems specifically. To demonstrate that, uh, I've got Riley up front and uh, he's gonna hit uh, exhaust gas temperature probe two with the heat gun. All right, so now that Riley has heated up piston number two, uh, I'll have you come in here and we can see what these numbers look like. We have our exhaust gas temperature probes and you can see that number two is registering about uh, 25 degrees higher than the other ones. Um, a reading like that, where you have one exhaust gas temperature probe reading higher than the others would mean that you've, you don't have a healthy firing on that piston and we'd want to investigate it. Cylinder head temperatures, if there's something wrong there, you look at the mapping, it tells us if there's adequate cooling across those or uniform cooling. So that would allow us to know if we need to adjust the cooling the other thing I want to demonstrate is that we have the AirMaster prop controller hooked up. And what that's going to allow me to do is change the pitch of the blades from fine to coarse. So just to demonstrate that. This is something you would do in between takeoff and cruise, you set up the blades for your takeoff configuration. And then once you got up into your cruising altitude, you would configure the blades to a course pitch for that cruising configuration. So one last thing I gotta show you guys before we head up to the engine is that the panel can articulate up and down while maintaining power to the displays. So just to show you what that looks like, It's a little something like that. The whole point of this is that we're providing both baggage space for the pilot and co-pilot, as well as improving ingress and egress into the cockpit. Let's move up to the engine and I'll show you what some of the wiring looks like. So here we are in the engine bay and you can see all the wiring that leads up to this center bulkhead connector plate here. This 
Connector plate is the interface between the engine, the center tunnel avionics box, and that is what ties to the instrument panel. Just to note, this bulkhead connector plate will not be made of polycarbonate in the final configuration. We'll likely be making it out of stainless steel. Just kind of going around here, you've got this connector here. This is what I'm calling kind of the miscellaneous uh, everything else connector for the wiring into the engine with uh, the other two connectors being ECU1 and ECU2. There's a few things I have to tidy up here, including adding shrink sleeve boots to each of these. And then I'm going to also be adding this fuse holder to the side of our air cooling box. And this fuse holder and fuses are for all of the flight critical hardware like our ECUs and landing gear. And that will run separately over here through this loom. So that's the next thing I'll be focusing my attention on. Some of the other remaining items here are going to be adding the air intake duct, which is separate from the wiring, and then a few other things. But for the most part, the wiring is wrapped up here in the engine bay. Hey everyone, I've been working on the main gear a lot lately and I can talk you through some of that. So I have the cab model pulled up for both the left and right main gear struts here. And just to refresh everyone, the design has the gear attached to the fuselage and they retract back into the fuselage. Uh, conventionally, you'll see the gear retract back up into the wing. So they'll mount the, the gear struts on the wing and have them just fold kind of 90 degrees into the bottom of the wing. We wanted to preserve the aerodynamic cleanliness of the wing. So that's why we went to this design where we have the main gear folding up into the fuselage. Uh, they've been pretty, challenging to design just because of the geometry uh, with the way they fold into the fuselage they kind of retract back at an angle so that means all the forces the way they uh, manifest in the components they're all on uh, weird axes so that makes the analysis a little tricky and that's basically what i've been working on lately is uh, going through and doing all the calculations required to verify that uh, our gear are going to withstand the worst case landing load conditions uh, i'm not going to talk you through all the the calculations because they're a little bit dry but what I thought would be interesting to, is to show a couple components that I haven't really talked about before, which uh, are these brackets and the, the drag links. So our old design for these brackets, we had a composite component here. Let me isolate this so we know what we're talking about. Here we go. Uh, so this was previously carbon fiber, but we changed to a machined bracket and that allowed us to tie the, the bracket for the drag link into the bracket for the shock. So that just makes it into one component here. So that gives us a, a manufacturing advantage and also makes it a little bit stronger having it all tied together. I'll also show you the drag links. Those are um, what constrain the strut from pivoting up when it's extended. Okay. Our drag links are really similar to what we had on the nose gear. There's a upper and a lower drag link and they scissor or fold up to allow the gear to collapse. And these are machined components. So we'll be machining these out on the Tormach mill. We actually ordered all the stock for the drag links here. Sorry, <laughs> the drag links and this bracket. Those are in the mail. So as soon as that stock arrives, we should be able to start machining those out. Uh, there are a bunch of other little parts as well, little pins and washers and nuts and bolts. I've been tracking those, pulling together a bill of material here and seeing what we have, what we need to order or what we need to order stock for so that we got everything in house when we get to assembling these gear struts. Not necessarily the most exciting thing to show not, uh, compared to the, the instrument panel or some of the machining things, but still really important to get done. So making it happen. That's all we have for this video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We have a lot of exciting progress to share in the next video. So tune in for that. We'll catch you guys next time. I think this is the drag link mounts and then this is the drag links. Yeah. Gosh, that's a big chunk of metal. Yeah, isn't it four by four by Yeah, something? it just suddenly looks huge though. Yeah, well, this is just doing the old book painter's tape on all the connections. This is how it would be hung in the plane too. Mm -hmm.